So here we have our seed. We've tried various methods with these seeds. So we've tried scarifying them. We've tried soaking them in water. Um, I've tried hitting them with a hammer. Anything to get them to germinate. The coating on these is really hard. I mean, they're just so hard. They're harder than Brazil nuts. I mean, they're like stones. Um, they're just unbelievable. Um, and in their natural environment, these would pass through the digestive systems of animals. Uh, so elephants might be one, um, hippos, who knows. Um, now, musas come from various parts of the world, so there's a good few animals that are going to be digesting these. So we need to replicate that. Now, the best thing I found for that is um, a product called saltpetre, uh, which is this stuff. Uh, you buy it in a powder form, it looks very dodgy. Um, I actually bought this on eBay uh, I've got two very small packets. I've mixed one of the packets in here with some water and I've used this all season, clearly labelled on the jam jar what it is. And I've soaked the seed in there, I don't know if you can see those. And they've been soaking in there for about three days. Now normally they recommend that you soak them for about 24 hours but I always do get a little bit carried away with these. So and I, I think they've got such a hard coating that we need to break those down further. Here we are, we've got our soil all prepared here, and uh, it's just a general mix of multi-purpose compost. So it's uh, nothing too special. Pre-soaked that, could be a bit damper. Um, I would almost say the damper the better. It doesn't want to be waterlogged though. Now we need to oik our seeds out of here. Avoiding getting any of this on our hands. Drain those off. Side. Let's just get some tissue and dry those off. So here are our seeds. Nothing too special. And we'll just space those apart, poke those in. You'll notice when they come up they're, um, they're quite easy to identify. But we'll show you a picture just so you know what to look out for. We're poking them about one centimeter in. Uh, there's no exact science. We'll pop that one in there. As soon as these start to germinate, we'll prick these out. So we'll take these out and pop them straight into a, its own little container. There's not a lot of nutrient in here. The, uh, the seeds themselves don't require light to germinate or darkness, but they will require a fluctuation in temperatures. So we've planted our seed, we've popped them in this tray, which is a, about a depth of two centimetres. We've planted them a centimetre down, we'll cover these with polythene and we'll put those on a nice sunny windowsill. I might pop them on the racking behind me because we've got heating uh, on that racking and that will just give a bit of bottom heat, which should spur them on. The temperatures generally want to go down throughout, uh, throughout the day to about 18, if you let your house get that cold, and up to 28, ideally, if you can get them that hot. Um, they do like that kind of fluctuation in temperatures, but having soaked them in the saltpeter, that will soften that coating, so it's kind of giving them a fighting chance. Don't be surprised if you get one or two, two seeds that pop up over the next few weeks, months, possibly. Don't throw the soil away, just store them somewhere and kind of forget about them. Maybe just checking on them every couple of weeks, because you will find after six months, one will germinate. So it's, it's worth just, don't turn them out. They're not like other bedding plants. Um, in fact, they're actually a herb. But uh, you'll get the first, the first seed will pop up will look similar to this. So it's quite small, a bit like a hosta leaf. And you want to separate it at that point. You don't want them crowded out pretty much like they are in here. This is a different um, musa, this is red tiger. Hasn't got its stripes yet, but it does have a stripy leaf. So as soon as you've potted it on, this is the point where they really start to grow. So I put them in clay pots at this time of year in the house so that they don't get over watered. In the summer when you put them out, they do require a lot of water, and that's when you add lots of water. The light levels have increased, the temperatures have increased. They will suck up that water and throw out a new leaf every week. And some of the leaves can be well over a meter. So that one is a few months old, so still babies. Uh, 
these are also two that are a couple of months old. Again, I'm keeping them in here. I'm in no rush to pop those on at this time of year. We'll maybe do that in another month's time. So I'm kind of holding them back at the moment. I only water them when they uh, when they start to wilt, growing them indoors. Outdoors, different story. You want to keep them watered. But again, too cold, so we won't put those out quite yet. And then before you know it, they quickly turn into whoppers. So this one's a few months old. I have actually cut this back pretty much similar to how we cut the anisette back the other day, straight across the top, which has meant that the first leaf that was coming out is squared off, not a problem. Every leaf thereafter will come out normal. So there we are, a normal leaf. Um, again, restricting the roots, uh, very little water as and when required. Um, try and hold them back. This is a Another one, this is the uh, red tiger that we were talking about. I don't know if you can see, yeah, we can clearly see the stripes in that. So again, the first leaf where I chopped it off, hacked it back, and then the next leaf to come out, it's got the lovely red stripes in. And that will become more apparent as the plant progresses and, and gets bigger. Again, I'll pot these on in the spring, give them a good feed, lots of water, and they'll go like the clappers. Uh, again, that one's just a couple of months old. And then this one, which is actually standing on the floor. Uh, I haven't watered it, which is why it looks a bit miserable. Um, lovely big leaves on this one. And I've, this is uh, Musa Baz due, this one. A bit under the ceiling? Yeah. And we've got a, I don't know if you can see this down here, we've actually already got a little pup on the side. And that is actually what you call them. So you, you can chop those off, pot that up. And these plants grow like the clappers. With a plant like this, it's fully hardy. I've got these in the garden. Um, they haven't got the leaves on, I've cut them back. Um, they look a bit miserable out in the garden. With a plant like this, you wouldn't just take this and put this outside from having it indoors. The shock would just be too much. And don't forget, if you want any advice, get in touch. Please leave a comment down below and please use the subscribe button in the top right hand corner great if you could subscribe and if you comment you will enter into our competition to win a free packet of resina seeds. Uh, next we'll be dealing with propagation so we'll start off with some geraniums um, but that'll be in a couple of days so I hope you can join me for that one. In the meantime thanks for joining me.